In Jesus' name, welcome the Trinity Lutheran Church because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is. It is a beautiful day to come together in this way and to share in God's word with one another. Well, my friends, it is beautiful with today's technology as, as we are standing and sitting in our homes listening to this virtual worship service or hearing Pastor Eric and myself. But in reality, I am not here, but on a mission trip with our young people. We have just spent the last couple of days traveling, and this week now, as we go into it, we'll be out in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, at Luther Haven Bible Camp. And so thank you for your prayers, and we ask that you continue to pray for safe travels and for our young people to experience a life-changing opportunity as they are out there sharing God's Word with others. And it's so wonderful to celebrate because last week was VBS for our children. This week is a youth mission trip for our youth. And just to think that as children of God of all ages, we can support and also participate in so many ways in these faith formation events. Exactly. One other announcement that we want to share with you again is that our first Wednesday intergenerational event will be the annual softball game. So when the youth return on August well, we will be coming together, but they will be returning. But on the first Wednesday, August 14th, from 6.30 to 8, we will all be together, young and old, meeting for a devotion, for a meal, and to cheer each other on as we play another game of softball. And I'm excited to take you on again as you lead the youth. Unfortunately, you're undefeated, meaning we've never won. But maybe <laughs> this year, our older team members will come through and make an improvement, and we do some extra practicing. You know what? Um, if you should just need some assistance, I do know of a retired baseball manager that uh, may help you out. We may have to call upon him and pull him out of retirement to coach us for that day. With all that being said, my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
I invite you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and our activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our children's message. The theme for our story is called Manna Quell and Water. I'm really hungry, Pastor Eric. Well, when you listen to the story, that may only increase. Oh, okay. But we'll see. Hunger for what? The food as bread, literally, or the bread of life? Hmm. We'll Good find question. out. So here is our story. God loved the Israelites and their leader, Moses. God promised to bring the people to a place where they could build homes and live happily. They had never lived outside of Egypt before, and they were afraid, as you can see. But God went with them as they walked long and far to the place God promised. Traveling was hard and tiring. Along the way, the people became hungry, mm -hmm. as I can imagine in your stomach grumbling. They complained to Moses, I'm so hungry. One boy cried, I wish we could go back to Egypt, whined a little girl. At least we had food to eat there. Her stomach growled. The people missed their dinners of meat and bread. The Israelites didn't know that God heard them complaining. That evening, something strange happened. Tiny birds called quails appeared everywhere. God had sent the quails so the people could eat meat. The next morning, the ground glistened with fresh dew. Even after the sun dried up the dew, there was still something covering the ground. It looked like bread had rained down from heaven. It was manna. The manna looked like tiny seeds and tasted like bread. The people ate and ate. Every day, God sent manna and quails so that the people had food to eat. Israelites kept traveling toward the place God promised. After a while, they ran out of water. Even though God had given them food when they were hungry, the people still complained. My mouth feels dry like a desert, sobbed a child. The people were thirsty. This time, God told Moses to hit a rock with a staff. When he did, water gushed out of the rock. The people had more than enough to drink. God gave food and water to the Israelites every day. God took care of the people, just like God promised. Wow, that's a beautiful story, Pastor Eric. One of the things that I listened to when you were talking about is that these people were traveling. <clears throat> have you ever traveled and you pack a lunch? Right, because I have. Because for some reason, whenever we travel, we always get hungry. So I can relate to these people. But when we travel, moms and dads are the ones that have food for us that uh, help us to overcome the hunger. And in this story, it was God 
that had food for the people that were traveling. Right. A beautiful thing that God made a promise that he was going to take care of them. And this is how he did it. And God felt or fed the children of God, as you stated, those Israelites each and every day. But what's fascinating is not only did God literally provide them food and water and bread, but we hear in Jesus' teaching later in the gospel that he is the bread of life that provides us eternal life. So not only does that food sustain us, literally, but also provides us eternal life beyond any need that we may have connected to our temporary hunger or thirst. Exactly, exactly. So whenever we receive food, whether it be on a trip or whether it be at the dinner table or wherever it is where our hunger is satisfied, always, always remember that it is God that is supplying us with that bread. But not only the bread that nourishes us, but like you said, the bread of life that is there for eternal life. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for taking care of the Israelites. Thank you for taking care of us and providing us with the food and the nourishments that we need, but also for providing us the bread of life through Jesus, your son. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our first reading for this Sunday is coming from Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 and 4, and verses 9 through 15. And it reads like this. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pot and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning... You shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given to you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is coming from Psalm. Psalm 78, verses 23 through 29. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven raining down manna upon them to eat, and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and powerful led out the south wind, raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas letting them fall into the midst of the camp and round about the dwellings. So the people ate and were filled, for God gave them what they craved. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net 
into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. This week, I am so excited to share with each of you that my heart is full because of the faith formation I got to witness through our children and youth occurring this very week. So many things are happening all at once. We have our young children participating in Vacation Bible School here in Pelican Rapids. We have other children going to Luther Crest Bible Camp where they are learning what it means to be created to be free, created to be authentic, and created to be a disciple of Christ. And then we have our youth that have left this past Friday to journey out to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, to Luther Haven Bible Camp, where they will participate in a faith formation activity connected to what is called Buddy Camp or Champ Camp, where they will be buddies to special needs children as they navigate through all the activities of camp, making sure that they are able to participate like everyone else and learn and have fun and make friends. And I just think to myself, how amazing is this that faith formation is happening locally, regionally, and across this country from children and youth connected to Trinity in so many different ways. And they are recognizing how they are able to walk with Jesus each and every step, no matter where they are, both near and far. And that just warms my heart. And I am so excited to share with each and every one of you. This week, during Vacation Bible School here in Pelican Rapids, our children pre-K through sixth grade, got to learn what it means to walk with Jesus. And that really means two things. One, as Jesus teaches us in the gospel reading, it means to follow Jesus by having faith and trusting in his promises. And secondly, it means that we can fish for people by proclaiming the good news of Jesus to others through words and deeds. And when we follow Jesus and fish for people, we're really walking with Jesus each and every day and every step of the way. Myself, alongside intern Pastor Beth, had the opportunity to teach during Vacation Bible School this year, and our lesson was focused on just that. What does it mean to fish for people, and how is that connected to being a disciple of Jesus who walks alongside Jesus every day. So we explored different ways we can fish for people by proclaiming the good news of Jesus through words and deeds. And that is exactly how we were able to teach what does that mean? How do we do that? How can we use the words that we say to fish for people by sharing the good news of Jesus. So we invited the children to make a circle. And so we all sat next to one another, seated on the ground in a similar way that many of the disciples would have done so as they ate alongside Jesus. And we asked them this simple question and said, what do you think Jesus would have said before he ate supper alongside all of the disciples? And I saw these little hands raise up quick. Oh, he would have prayed before they ate, just like we do. I said, that is exactly right. As I watched their confidence grow, and I said, okay, so 
if you know that Jesus would pray and you pray before supper, what are some prayers that you share with one another around the table before you eat, whether you're with your family or your friends or at church? And I got to see one person raise her hand and said, we like the come Lord Jesus, be our guest prayer. It's like, awesome. Can you lead us in doing that? And I got to hear and see them lead it as some people knew it and some people got to learn it as they were literally fishing for people in real time for each other here in this circle. I got to hear another prayer of God is great, God is good, which was familiar to some but not all, and they got to learn another way through words that we can proclaim the good news of Jesus in prayer and fish for people amongst a group of people just simply through saying a supper prayer. And then the other one that I got to hear, which warmed my heart, because I know that many of us here at Trinity are familiar with this prayer because we say it quite often when we are events with people of all ages, especially around meals. And that prayer was called Johnny Appleseed. And so I watched some of our Trinity children excitedly sing out the top of their lungs, Oh, the Lord is good to me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things that I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen, 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 amen. And as I watched each child participate in these different prayers or share them or lead them, they grew in confidence of what it means to share the good news of Jesus through words, and that's how we can fish for people in one way. As we explored fishing for people and proclaiming the good news of Jesus through deeds, in turn, Pastor Beth and I put down this tablecloth on the ground, outside in the grass, and we put different things on the ground. We put people and we put fish. And these weren't real people or real fish, but they were pictures that we cut out. And then we gave each child a ring that they would throw. And if they got near a fish, they would share with us one way that they could be kind with another person, because that's really a way that we can proclaim the good news of Jesus through deeds with another person and fish for people. And so we got to hear, again, these little hands jump up and say, oh, I know how I can be kind. So every child that landed on or near a fish would say things like this. I could be kind by, if I saw another child crying, giving them a hug and some encouragement. I could be kind if I saw on the playground someone off by themselves inviting them to take part in an activity with others. I could be kind if I saw someone that was hurt by going to get a teacher to make sure that they got the help that they needed. I could be kind if someone got hurt by going to get a Band-Aid for them. I thought that that was pretty neat. I could be kind by smiling at someone to help bring them into a better mood. And there was just so many examples And as they threw those rings that landed on the fish, I watched again growing in confidence and realizing, oh my, each and every day we have an opportunity to fish for people through the words and deeds that we share of the good news of Jesus. And that is just one way we can walk with Jesus each and every day of our lives. As they could see what they were learning come to life in ways that they know they do each and every day. Now, if they took the ring and they tossed it and it landed on a person, then there was a question on the back of it. And if they paid attention to our story that we read, they could gather up those people as they continue to fish for people. And that was one way that they were able to get more and more points while they played that game. And I will tell you, It has warmed my heart, and I am so honored to be able to share that with you today as I just saw our 
pre-K through sixth graders grow in confidence that they understood what it means to walk with Jesus each and every day. Whether that was proclaiming the good news of Jesus through words and deeds by fishing for people, whether that was following Jesus by having faith, or recognizing that they can walk alongside Jesus in everything that they do, no matter what. Whether they're on a school bus or they're in school, they're walking with Jesus. Whether they're in church or they're with their family, they're walking with Jesus. They're walking with Jesus on vacation. They're walking with Jesus on youth mission trips or Bible camps or vacation Bible school. And yes, even if they're swimming in a lake, which was one of the questions we received, they too can walk alongside Jesus in that very moment. And they recognize that, yes, we walk through Jesus during good times, and we can walk with Jesus through tough times, because Jesus will never leave our side. And to come and to see the confidence and hear those words that they shared with me, I share with all of you, because from the mouths of children, There's wisdom that we can learn and be renewed in our own faith and encouraged in our own walk with Jesus as disciples of Christ, no matter what age we are as children of God, whether we're infants or all the way to over a hundred. We can do this each and every day in so many different ways. So I encourage you this week, as you navigate through life, whether you are at home whether you are in a senior living facility, whether you are traveling or working or on a youth mission trip out in Idaho or located at Alexandria at Luther Crest Bible Camp or just living life on your own or amongst your family and friends, I encourage you to walk with Jesus by having faith and following him and trusting in his promises, but by also fishing for people through words and deeds by sharing the good news of Jesus with others. And when you fish for people, remember what you do. And next Sunday and throughout this week, share with other people how you fished for people through words and deeds. Did you pray for someone privately? Or pray for them publicly? Did you read a Bible story to a grandchild or a child or someone that you know? Did you help a neighbor in need? Did you provide some encouragement? Did you check in on someone that you care about? Did you call them or text them? Did you email them or send them a letter? There are infinite ways that we proclaim the good news of Jesus through words and deeds and fish for people both near and far. And when you do that, I invite you to share with each other how you do that this week and definitely next Sunday because we will also have an opportunity to hear how our youth mission trip went and how they fished for people all the way across the country in Idaho. And through the good news of Jesus they shared by their words and deeds, and activities that they engaged in alongside their buddies during champ camp. And we can be reminded through all of these examples that we walk with Jesus each and every day in an an infinite amount of ways. And that is good news. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized, our lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life, where the sun blazes hard and the strong bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with the needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and the witnesses of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into the eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ's word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, our country, and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer, offer with joy and thanksgiving what, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we go forth into the remainder of this day, and into the week before us, I leave you with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the winds be always at your backs. May the sun shine warm upon your faces, and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again... May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. My life is
As we go forth this day, may we be nourished by the bread of life that we acknowledge Jesus is for each and every one of us, as our faith in him provides us eternal life in heaven. May that be a promise that we can hold on to no matter what we're experiencing each and every day of our lives. So let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless. 